Hi, my name is Elizabeth Russell. I'm a solo practitioner here in Madison, and I practice mainly copyright, trademark, arts and entertainment uh, law. I don't do patent, because to do that, you have to be a scientist, and my bassoon major doesn't count. Um, but it does allow me to speak pretty freely about, about music. Some people don't realize that playing music in public can be copyright infringement, and that it doesn't really matter that it's your CD or the songs on your iPod that you bought and paid for. You can't play those things in public without a license. Who wants to know why? OK, one person, that's good. OK, well, so it starts out with the coolest thing on earth, the US Constitution. And the Constitution says, in kind of these words, you know what, we want to have like a rich public domain, a material that everybody can use. But to get that, the people who create that cool stuff have to be able to make a living. So we're going to give them a monopoly on their work for a limited time. And then when that time runs out, uh, their material's going to pass into the public domain, okay? So that's the framework. So now, Congress, you go out and make laws, um, copyright and patent laws that kind of flesh that out, okay? So that's what has happened. So now what we're left with in uh, copyright law is this. First, there's all kinds of rules about what qualifies and what doesn't for copyright protection. Uh, but the basic rule to start out is that it's got to be uh, one of the types of work on this list. So when we're talking about music, we're often talking about two different types of work. A musical work and, which is something totally separate, a sound recording. The musical work is a composition. That's what the composer wrote, and it can usually be depicted on score paper. The sound recording is a fixation of sound. It's a fixation, usually, of a particular artist's performance or the creative uh, contribution of a, of a recording engineer. All right, so qualify for copyright protection, then what do we get? Well, we get this entire bundle of six rights here. And look, number four is the exclusive right of public performance. So nobody can do any of the things on, on, on this bundle without a license from the copyright owner. So I write a song, a musical work, you can't go out and perform it in public without a license from me. Now, I'm going to pause here for one second to point out that we're only talking about the fact that you have to license the musical work, not the sound recording. I'll tell you why in a minute. But here are just some examples of, of the many uses of music in public. Not, and don't forget, even your on hold music is a public performance. This is a shot from one of the performing rights societies. And as you can see, there are licenses for pretty much any kind of venue that there is. Um, OK. I forget what's next. So we'll just wait. Yeah, it'll, happen. it'll happen. Oh, yeah, so that's right. So you're going to say, so wait a minute. How come we have to license a musical work and not the sound recording? And the quick answer is because there's an exception in the law that says sound recordings don't get the right of public performance or public display. Um, so that's, that's why. There's this one little example that I don't have time to explain. I mean, exception. But basically, that's it. You would have to license the musical work but not the sound recording, right? And remember, there's a difference between owning the media, the physical media um, in which a work is embodied. You can own that, but not the bundle of rights for that work. So like you own a painting, you own a piece of canvas, but you don't own the bundle of rights that goes with that, with that painting. So they're like, all right, you're like, all right, all right, I get it. So who has to pay? Well, whoever's making the perform, whoever's performing, or the venue that is hosting the performance, who gets the money? The copyright owner. But now you will say, all right, I'm in Alabama. How is a copyright owner in Wisconsin possibly going to know that I perform their song? Well, good question. That's why we have performing rights societies, and we have three of them, ASCAP, BMI, and CSEC. And it is their job to go out and grant licenses to people like you who perform music in public to collect the fees and then return them back to their members. So if I write a song, I go over, I sign up with one of the three performing rights societies. They go to you, they grant you a license to cover so that you can perform whatever music is in their catalog. They collect their fees, and then by a series of inscrutable formulas, they send the money back to their members, so I kind of get paid. But this is, this is important. <laughs> now, 
if I signed up with ASCAP, Elton John signed up with BMI, and Paul McCartney signed up with CSEC, and you played all three of our songs, you need a license from each one of those performing rights societies, not just one of them. All right, so now you say, yeah, so what if I don't? And the answer is, well, it's expensive, it can be cripplingly expensive, and you look bad. Okay, so it might feel good to like dig in your heels and say, nah, I'm not gonna do this, but really, it, it rarely pays uh, to do that. I, I hear all of these, especially the third one. They say, well, that law is stupid, I hate that I'm not doing it. Well, fine, make your own choice, but it's probably gonna be not a good one. Here are some things that you can do, though, is Analyze what music you are playing. Maybe restrict it to just one of the right society, so maybe you only need one license instead of three. Or, you know what, you don't have to get your license just from the performing rights societies. The copyright owners can grant them directly. What a great opportunity for you to work with local artists Work with them directly, play their music. It's good for you, good for the local artists. Um, and finally, it is okay um, under certain circumstances to play the radio in your business, but get a little advice before you do that because there's tons of rules um, on, on how that works. So um, I believe I've come almost to the end of my remarks and I will then say, uh, all right, I'm not your lawyer. This is not legal advice, but have a good day. Thanks. <laughs>